Hey, thanks for joining me for this tutorial on vMix, which is a really great streaming software that I've come to really love in the last week. Believe it or not, I've only been using this for about a week, and it's really that easy to get to learn. And making this mainly for my media team to be able to watch this and get up and running in hopefully about 20 or 30 minutes, uh, it's really that easy to use. Now, Understand that vMix is a paid software, but the basic HD version right now is only $69. So uh, to be able to get started with a professional type software like vMix is very inexpensive. And you can get up and running very quickly and, again, have a very polished look to your live stream. And I know that's very important uh, to us. We believe in excellence at Mag Church. So this is, is what I've found works really well. Now, the past few weeks, I've worked with some other software like OBS, which is free, and I found it to be great software, but uh, there were some glitches that we had and, and just some things, some inputs that I couldn't get to work right. So you may not have that issue, but I can tell you just from my experience the past few weeks that vMix has been a whole lot easier to get up and running. Now, vMix... Uh, if you can see my screen, we're in the trial period, which gives you a full 60 day trial to their most premium version. So there's no reason not to try it out. And I think you'll really like it. So let's get started. First of all, notice that we have two windows here. And the first window, of course, is on the left hand side. It's got the orange bar, which means it's our preview window. So if I just single click any file on here, at the bottom, I can bring up uh, that video file or whatever that file is. I can bring that up into there and have it ready to go live in my right hand window, which is has the green bar right here. And whenever I click fade or any one of these buttons, but I like to use the fade button. Whenever I click fade, it automatically brings it in. To the right hand window there's nothing else I have to do it just automatically starts playing it's that simple now of course you have to be streaming for that to actually go out to the live stream and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute but I did want to go over the windows and the inputs because it's a little bit overwhelming when you first look at it like this now understand that when you first open vmix you're only going to have two blank windows there's going to be an orange window and a green window down here and you just really can add to it from there. And you do that through this button right here. It's called Add Input. And you just click on it. And you can see all the things that I've imported over the last week, just playing with it, just learning how to use it. We actually used this for our Wednesday night service this past week. And it worked uh, great. I, we just we didn't have any issues with it at all. And that was even using Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi camera uh, and it, it worked really, really well. On the input select, you can see all kinds of different inputs you can use uh, from video. Uh, maybe you have a visiting evangelist uh, or missionary that has a DVD with them that has a file on it. And you can import that or get that queued up from the DVD. Uh, you can bring in another camera. You can use NDI, which, which is over the, your network. And I'm going to show you how we do our lower thirds in ProPresenter using NDI in just a few moments. You can bring in image sequences, an image photos. You can bring in a PowerPoint. You can bring in different audio inputs like the microphone I'm using right now. I brought that in as an audio input. You can bring in titles. Now, it's got a re some really professional uh, lower thirds and titles. I'll show you that in just a minute as well. Also, there is a video call function. You can actually click on this and um, get a URL that you can send to someone. All they have to do is get in their browser and they just have to input this password once they go to this browser. And you can actually, from their phone or their mobile device, you can actually import uh, someone on the other line, maybe uh, across the world. So it's really neat. They've really thought this out well. And of course, vMix has been around for quite a long time and they've really built on their success over the years. So I've really been impressed with their company and their response. So to import a file, all you have to do, which most of the time it's going to be a video or uh, an image, and you just click on the video 
tab right there, browse to wherever it would be on your hard drive and just click it. Let's just do that right now. I'm just going to click one here. It's going to be a motion background. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to be down at the bottom. Now look how easy this is. If I don't want it at the bottom, say I want it up here. I want it, I want it number one. I'm just going to drag it over. And there it is. You also have the option when you import, if you want it in a certain number, a certain sequence, you can always browse to the file and you can click the number. If you want it as number one, you can click number one right there. Click OK and it just imports it as number one. Now sometimes you have a motion background that is a little too fast or maybe even a little too slow. And I'm just going to show you this one just as an example. Say it's going just a little bit too fast. You can just slow it down. You right click, show hide playback speed, and you can slow it down in here. Or you can speed it up. Now another important thing is when it gets to the end of this, unless you click loop, it's just going to stop. So for something like a motion background or something like that, that you would want to continue looping, uh, you would just click that and it's going to continue to loop. You can also uncheck the audio because there's no audio to these files. Okay. If you wanted to take that uh, slider off to give you more room, you can right click it and hide it again. Okay, something that is quite easy to do on here if you're not careful, if you accidentally slip and press close, you can actually uh, close out one of your files or several of your files if you're not careful. So what you can do is you can click on this lock down here and it will actually lock the interface to where there's nothing you can do on here that would, would close it out. Now it'll do other things, but you're not able to, to take any drastic action like closing out your files. And, you know, if, uh, let me unlock it here. If you accidentally closed a file and you know that you closed it, you can always go up here to the restore and it'll bring it back for you. But in certain situations, maybe you had somebody else using the computer. I know in our situation right now, we're going to be using this computer for ProPresenter 7 and for the vMix software. Uh, so with two people on that, if someone accidentally closes something out, you may not know it's closed out until you go to look for it at the end or the beginning of service or during worship or whatever. And then you're uh, searching frantically for it. You don't even really know what you're searching for, maybe where it is on the hard drive. So that lock will keep you from accidentally closing anything out or making uh, unnecessary changes on the file. Now, real quick, I want to discuss the audio mixer here. It's pretty straightforward. And of course, this is our master fader. Uh, but all of these other files that have audio with them, even the ones that don't have audio, uh, still are show here in the interface. And they're all named, of course, what they're named over here. But you'll notice that uh, each of these have an M, which means mute. Now, if it's it has the green around the M, that means it is the audio is on. It's not muted. But like this one right here, which is our ProPresenter lyrics, we don't have any audio with them. So I just keep it on mute. There's no reason to have audio with that channel. OK, uh, but your faders, you, you simply slide them up and down. Uh, if it gets a little crowded, uh, the only thing I have to be careful of is they'll go down to the third level here and sometimes I'll be looking for it and uh, I won't see it so what I try to do I try to keep as few uh, input files here as I can and I try to keep all of my faders visible here so I'll be able to see them at one glance as well as my input files if possible okay so now that we've got the basic interface down how do we actually live stream from vmix it's very simple there is a stream button down here and once you get your social network set up whether it's youtube or facebook uh, all you have to do is just go down here and click stream and it'll turn orange or yellow for just a few moments and then it's going to go red fairly quickly and once it goes red there it goes once it goes red All you do is go to your YouTube interface 
or Facebook or whatever you're using. With us, it's YouTube, so it's going to be a little bit different with the other streaming networks. You just go there, you see you have the excellent connection. And as you see, this is our file that we have ready to go live. And all you have to do is click Go Live. It says you're live. You are. And that's what it's going to look like for us. It's it's about a 10 to 20 second delay. Lord, Edward, comfort us today. We need you today. Lord, have your way today. And then when you get done with your stream, all you have to do is end stream. In the church and in this nation and the world, Lord, have your way today. Lord, and that's all there is to it. You go here and you click stream and stop streaming here as well. And that's how you go live with vMix. It's really that simple. Okay, so I want to talk just a minute about what this center column is for. Uh, they could really have called this transitions because that's what it is. But the, my favorite is the fade transition. I think that is appropriate in most situations. Now, when you're using cameras, uh, I prefer to cut most of the time uh, from one camera to the other if it's a close-up shot. Now, if it's a shot of the congregation, sometimes it, it's nice to fade that in. But just to give you an example here, um, I'm going to fade in this motion graphic, motion background. And let's bring our Easter, Easter intro back. I'm going to restart that. And I'm just going to do a wipe on this one. And so that's kind of nice every now and then. If I wanted to do uh, a reverse wipe, you can just do from the bottom to the top there. And the cut would just cut to it. There's no fade. And I don't remember if I mentioned it, but you can also do a fade transition by this bar here. Say if you wanted to do one really slow, um, slower than the one second or so that it normally does, you can just bring it over real slowly. Can't really think of a time when we would do that, but maybe it'll come okay so let's talk just a minute about overlays because that's really important I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna bring pastor JR back I'm just gonna kind of go to the end of his sermon here just so I can I want to illustrate you again, as I did what an overlay week, does so one of our overlays come, here is our mag church logo and I don't click on this because I don't want Spirit. it to just play this file. You're not baptized in the I want to of overlay God, it onto the existing uh, file here. In, so see, uh, the existing you video what, file. So what I'm going to do is instead of clicking on the file Acts itself, I'm two, just going to choose a number so down here. Do it really doesn't matter four, which five, one you six, use. Nine, and ten. But I'm just going to click on one. And you see it brings up our logo in the top right hand corner there that I've already prepared. It's on a transparent background so it overlays nicely. He wants, he wants to give you now, say I want to bring in a lower third. I'm going to press him. number two because I'm going to bring in a second ask transition you. here. Say maybe you're skeptical, maybe you're doubtful, and it's going to bring him. that in. Looks Get nice. Get in your prayer closet and, and, and tell him if you mean it with a sincere heart. God, I want everything. And I usually keep a lower me. third up only about if five or ten seconds. You don't want to keep it up any it. longer than that and draw too much attention to it. It's just mainly just to let people know. Uh, maybe that they don't know uh, what they're watching, who this is. This is Pastor J.R. Armstrong of Mag Church. This is in Mauriceville, Texas. So they'll kind of know if they're watching it, if they stumble on it, or if maybe somebody shared uh, a stream on Facebook and they've tuned in and they're not sure uh, what it's about. They know what they're watching and, and where it's from. So I'm just going to click on number two just to get rid of that lower uh, third there. It just fades out say, nicely. Number one, same deserved. thing. There's been people it takes off the, the uh, logo. And we're right here at the end of this video down. file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our outro bumper. And you see it's right in the middle of the file, so I need to click restart. To take this country. So it starts in the right place. And here we go. One more time. I'm going to fade it in. See how nice that is? What a nice ending to give instead of just cutting off your stream. And this is actually when I edit 
uh, our sermons, this is actually the bumper uh, that I put on the end. So the outro, I should say, that I put on the end of those. So this gives a way to, gives it a way to do that live, and it gives a very professional feel again to your live streams. So I just wanted to show you how to use the overlays and how simple they are. Now, when you bring an overlay, you can click and bring them on down here and remove them from down there, or you can click down here and then you can remove them from up here. Maybe you're ready to fade something in and you want to fade that uh, overlay out really quickly and you don't want to go down here and mess around down in this area. So you can just go click it from up there and it'll remove it. Now the next thing that I want to talk about that I think is very important uh, to the worship part of your service is readable lyrics on screen. Now, if you look here, this is our last Sunday service when we were not able to use vMix. And you'll see that all we could do really is just show the screen with the lyrics on it. Now, that's not too bad. Uh, but really, we wanted to get a closer shot of the worship team and be more professional in our lyric presentation. So this next Sunday for Easter Sunday, it's going to be more like this. Now, of course, this file I just zoomed in, and I'm going to show you how we have overlaid our Pro Presenter lyrics and how we can do that uh, with an overlay layer. So I'm going to fade this in, and I brought in my Pro 7 lyrics through NDI. Now I'm going to go to my Pro Presenter. And I'm going to click on the right slide for this particular part of the song. And you can see how professional that looks. And it's really easy to do uh, through our NDI connection through ProPresenter. Now, I'm not going to get into that because uh, there's plenty of... Uh, videos on YouTube on how to do that with Pro 6 or Pro 7. Uh, but it's very easy to do and set up a layer that actually, I'm going to show this to you, that actually shows the congregation the slide the way it normally is presented, just like we had it on the, uh, had it on the screen Sunday. And this would be similar to how we would normally have the slide in the sanctuary. Yet, when we click on that, those lyrics shall be forevermore holy as the Lord are going to be on the lower part of the screen. Uh, very contrasted with the white on the black. And so it's very easy to follow along with while the worship team is leading. So this is another important thing, an uh, important reason why we need to have uh, no more than two lyric lines per slide because three would be too many. And really it's to me, it's the best way to present the lyrics. Now that also means that whoever's doing the slides has to really stay on top of that and not fall behind and, and, and put that out a little bit ahead of what the singer is singing. But it's very important to have these readable and you know the congregation can sing them as well as somebody watching at home or somewhere else on live stream. So uh, this is a great way to make your presentation a whole lot more professional uh, through ProPresenter 7 and getting your lyrics through ProPresenter onto the live stream through vMix as a lower third. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is titles and uh, lower thirds themselves and how to create those because sometimes you'll need to do that on the fly. Say if we have uh, a visiting evangelist, uh, visiting missionary, uh, it's very easy to add these on the on the fly. So let me just give you an example here. Let's go back to our video here with Pastor JR. Now, this is another thing. We need to make sure that we click on the overlay and make sure it's gone after the worship service is over. Now, I'm just going to bring up that lower third I have here. I almost clicked on the video file, so we've got to make sure we don't do that. Got to click on one of the numbers to make it an overlay instead of a video file. So if you click on number one, 
or number two or three or four. Depending on the version of vMix you have, some you can only use one layer. Uh, but it'll bring up the lower third I created for uh, Pastor JR. Now let me show you how easy this is to create on the fly. All you would do is add input, go down to title slash XAML. And this particular one is number 33. It's right here, but let's go to uh, the peach colored one. Just click on it and let's say we want to bring it in as number one. We're going to click on number one, select OK. Say we've got Evangelist Bob Smith. All right, and then you just press five. And it is in the number one spot. And I clicked on the video like I should not have, but all I have to do is just go right here and select it as an overlay. And there we go, it's right there. Now say, to me that's a little too big. So what I can do is, I can click on the little wheel there for settings. Bring this down just a bit. And what I'm gonna do is, make it a little smaller and then I just take my pan function and bring it down. And that's it. You just click on X and look at that. It's ready to go on the fly. All there is to it. Now there's a, a lot of other things in vMix that I haven't covered a lot of it. I really haven't dove into, but this really, everything that I've shown you really serves uh, the purpose of what I needed to do at this particular time. Uh, but there are different things. Uh, you, there are recording functions that we're going to be using uh, for the different PTZ cameras, I believe, uh, with some of the higher uh, tiers of vMix. You can uh, record up to two cameras at once if you have a fast enough computer. By the way, vMix only works, I believe, on Windows machines. Uh, so unless you uh, are going to have some kind of Windows VirtualBox on, on an Apple or Mac, uh, you cannot run vMix. It's a Windows only product unless you modify things on your Mac to be able to run it. So I hope this helped you today. I hope you're able, I hope it's able to get you up and running. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Just uh, put something in the comments below or you can uh, let me know some other way and I'll be glad to research it for you if I don't know and get back with you. Thanks so much.